بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters and welcome to another episode of Way to Behave with me today three beautiful guests mashallah we have with us brother Idris assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah thank you for being with us brother Idris and we also have brother Musa and Muhammad assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh so for the brothers and sisters at home the viewers who maybe have just joined us in this particular show um, where are we we're talking about a number of ayat different stories in the Quran and trying to extract benefits so that we can uh, practically implement in our daily lives to become better Muslims Hence the show being called Way to Behave. Now we were previously talking about the story of Aisha radiallahu anha. And we know that there are verses pertaining to this incident in Surah An-Nur, which is the 24th chapter of the Quran. Now we've reached pretty much towards the end of the story. And for those who have been following carefully, will now see that this part of the story is really the uh, culmination of a number of events and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test his servants in so many different ways. Because sometimes we find that a test is maybe only to one person. And a common example that's given is, let's take the example of poor people. Now, a lot of us see that, maybe some images on the television or our devices, and we see these fuqara and masakeen and going through difficulty with no food and drink, and we say, what a test and calamity and a trial that they're going through. We don't realize that there is a trial for us as well watching that. There is more than one trial, more than one test happening here. Yes, there is a test for those people who don't have anything, but there is also a test for you. What are you going to do about this situation? And are you able to do something about this? In the situation of Aisha radiallahu anha, yes, of course, the, the brunt or the biggest part of the test was what she was facing and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course. But also those people who were in and around the situation. They were tested as well. So did they involve themselves in spreading the rumors? Did they speak out? Did they speak well? So quite easily we think that, you know, that the bow or the light is not upon us when there's a situation going on. But commanding the good, forbidding the evil, helping one another is something that isn't just on a few people. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects all of us to play our part. Now, as Muslims, how, how easy it is for us to just, you know, move away from the situation and to say, you know what, this has got nothing to do with me. It might be a Muslim. And the fact that they're Muslim, they're our brother, our sister, it's not an option for us to just step away from the situation. Even at the very least, you can say, you know, Allah al-Mustan, may Allah help them. Allah ya'inukum, may Allah help you. So, a lot of the time we find Muslims kind of following other communities where you know, it's not my business, I stay away from it. Now, I don't mean that you need to get involved in everything. You know, from the good affairs of a Muslim is to stay away from that, what does not concern them. But if something is arrived, has arrived at your doorstep, it's not an option for you to turn away. But sometimes you have to, you have to command the good and you have to forbid that evil, of course, on the different levels that we have spoken about before. So the test was facing everybody, not Aisha, radiallahu anha. So if we go back to the story, subhanAllah. So we find that Aisha radiallahu anha is in her home. And she has been there for quite a while and she's in a very desperate state. The Prophet sallallahu had visited her and said that if you are free from this issue, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal something to absolve you of this issue. If you did something wrong, then admit to it. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness because Allah jalla wa'ala is the most forgiving. But her response was, a response of pure uh, trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah jalla wa ala would take care of her affairs. And we know as Muslims that regardless of what situation we're in, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always take care of us. And we should never forsake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a while passed. Then eventually the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into the home of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, which was where Aisha was staying. As he entered sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there was the biggest smile on his face. And that when he entered, that both Abu Bakr radiallahu anh and his wife Umar Ruman, that they both stood up. They both stood up. And they said to Aisha, stand up for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
she was so distraught that she was unable to stand. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled at her and said that Allah subhanahu wa taala, who is above the heavens, has revealed ayat absolving you, freeing you from this situation completely. From this day forward, in fact, from this moment forward, until Yawm Al-Qiyamah, nobody can say anything towards Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The fact that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala revealed 20 verses, 20 verses, maybe from uh, verse number 11 onwards in Surah An-Nur, talking about this situation specifically, about how Allah Jalla wa'ala freed her, absolved her from the false accusation. Also talking about the punishment of those who were to be involved in spreading these rumors. So how happy would an individual feel in that until now, subhanAllah, we recite verses absolving and freeing Aisha radiallahu anha from this particular uh, situation. So when this was said to her, they said, the parents of Aisha radiallahu anha, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, you should thank Allah. You should thank the messenger of Allah. You should thank him. She said, no. My thanks is truly and only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not a sign of disrespect in any way. But for us, first and foremost, when we thank, we thank Allah. And she remained patient throughout this whole time. Who knows, maybe going into six weeks, because she was ill for a month, as you remember, through when the rumors were being spread. And then maybe some weeks after that, waiting for the revelation to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe close to two months that a person were, whose honor was in question just outside the door. A person who had never done anything wrong in their lives, but a person who remains firm and steadfast and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah jalla wa'ala will never forsake them. And how many examples we have in the Quran where prophets alayhim wasalam, from the very highest status, the highest status amongst the creation, this is one of the most, or the most clearest and most powerful um, traits that they had in having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure that we all have some examples in our lives where, where I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah made it easy for me. Maybe it was an exam, maybe it was a job opportunity, or maybe it was a situation where people were speaking about me, but I remained you know, uh, reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Brother Idris, if I may mention to you about, or ask some feedback from you about what is the importance of having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh, it's extremely important. I mean, the idea of having tawakkal and understanding it properly is essential for a Muslim. Mm. Without it, he, you're going to find yourself having many problems, whether that be mental or actual problems that come to you. Of course, we have to understand what tawakkal really means. You have to do, most of the time, you, you do your part in the dunya, and you leave the rest that's out of your control to Allah, yeah. that He will give you the best result for. So having this kind of tawakkal is... Mm. Is, 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 is easier said than done. Yeah. We all say we have, we trust in Allah, we all say it, but in actuality, what's going on in you, and some of the things you think, you don't really have to work on. Yeah. So it's something that we have to work on and, and develop ourselves in, so that we consciously have to, real to mm. go, yeah. not just lip service. Sure. Yeah. I think when, you know, listening to these stories, we, we educate ourselves in the importance of a tawakkul. And then how to you know, implement that new knowledge is that try to put yourself in a position where you know, you've got a colleague, you've got somebody that you know is going through some troubles. Maybe they you know, have a misunderstanding of what it is to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know, what would you say to a person who's maybe going through some trials and tribulations? You know, listening to these stories, Muhammad, how would you advise right. them to have trust in Allah? Well, we all should have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when hardships and uh, circumstances and when hardships befall us, we should know that at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to overcome them. Mm -hmm. Also, I remember uh, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam in the Quran and yeah, how, how Yaqub waited and how Yaqub was patient mm -hmm. and, and how he said, Inna ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. To Allah alone, I complain. So we should always complain to Allah. Complaining to people will not help us. I mean, nowadays I see a lot of people, they complain to each other and they complain about the hardships and their life circumstances. We should only complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Musa, you know, I think 
uh, going through the story, we have benefited greatly. I, I myself am the first to admit that, you know, reading stories like this, especially from the Quran, it reaffirms my faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will never forsake us and never leave us to our own devices as long as, and this is a condition, as long as we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have somebody that comes to you and is having some troubles and you've learned something about tawakkul, what kind of important things would you advise them about what it, how important it is to have trust in Allah? I mean, basically, from, from that particular example in the Qur'an, mm. patience, patience, yeah. and patience. Subhanallah. Uh, other than that, uh, of course, the uh, shura, like, mm -hmm. uh, have them uh, speak with, if I'm, I'm the person that that uh, colleague or friend vents out to, mm -hmm. Uh, I will recommend that he goes to someone else that he trusts as well so that he can get a second opinion and a third on the matter and inshallah with tawakkul and having faith in Allah that he will he's the only one who's going to take him or her out of the calamity uh, that that would be patience again yeah so I think using the Quran as well Jazakumullah very beautiful points that using the Quran uh, in situations like this where you know, maybe a, poor, a person is in a situation where people are talking about them and spreading false uh, rumors and, and slandering them and whatnot, you, know, you can advise them that there is uh, a story in the Quran which uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she went through and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a revelation concerning that. Now, yes, this revelation was revealed concerning that situation. However, it doesn't mean that the meaning is only restricted to that incident. Rather, the benefit that we can get from these verses is applicable to all situations. And this is very important in understanding the Qur'an. That yes, there may be certain verses from the Qur'an which were revealed concerning a situation, but are not only restricted to that. So if somebody comes to me and says that people are speaking about me and I don't know what to do, you can just simply say, listen, you know, go to the Mus'haf and I want you to ponder over this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تحسبوه شر لكم بل هو خير لكم. Don't think it's something an evil and wrong for you. It's something better for you. It's something good for you. You may not see it now. You may not understand it. If people are spreading all these false rumors about you, then you are taking their hasanat. You are taking away their good deeds, and they're going onto your scale on the day of judgment. So don't see it as any loss. Allah's true honor is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. May Allah's reward honor us all. Brother and sisters, we've come to the end of this particular segment. Please join us after the break where we're going to continue talking about the actual verses that were revealed in this particular incident. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.